with a Heimlich manoeuvre. That's all we do when you've got something stuck in your throat, you numpty. You don't know anything about first aid. Do you know what? Because you won't pay for me to go on the course. If she dies, Ash... She won't die. Look, she's waking up already. What's going on? You've collapsed off. Oi, it's OK now. You're with friends. Go in, we'll get a chair. I don't need a chair. <laughs> right, sit down. I'm not going anywhere. I'm fine. Right, I've, uh, we got any brand here? No. Tea then, sweet, strong tea. I don't like strong tea. Weak tea then, and then I'm taking you to the medical centre. No way. Oh, oh, oh no Tina, way. No. Tina, Go Tina, on. you've collapsed. You need to get yourself checked out. You keep a guard, I'll make the tea. It's all right, Tina. Calling me that. It's just my little game. Yes, well, it's a silly game. My name's not Heathcliff and yours isn't Cathy. But if we pretend, it'll give us a deeper understanding of the book and the Bronte world. <laughs> you do what you like. I'm going home. Not in that, you're not. The engine's conked out. <sighs> Are you all right, Tina? I'm great, thanks. She's fainted. Oh dear. Oh well, just sit quiet there. Eh? Ashley, now, uh, did you do that rib of beef? I did, I, and it's a belter. One week tea, no shot. Where's Tina? What? Oh, she must have left. When? Oi! I told you to keep a lookout. Honestly, I turned my back for one second. Been bullied. What? In the army? No. <laughs> well, if anything, it'd be him doing the bullying. Yeah, cheers for that. I find it all highly fishy. Uh, get off. I can't believe you let her get away. I can't believe you went after her. Well, did you see her? She was manic, hair all over the place. She was rude. And at a chucked her house, she had to faint it. It's not as if she's a good customer. Ah, uh, that's what it always boils down to with you, innit? Profit and loss. She only came in here to tell you to keep this out. She'd have gone straight home, she had to faint it. Fainted? Exactly. You don't just faint. I've had many people fainting here over the years. Why? The heat? The heaving crowds? I don't think so. Oh, well, you have done quite a bridge trade this morning as it happens. And I don't like your tone. Hey? If a customer come in here now and heard me and you talking, they'd think it was you that were the boss. I'm naturally assertive. You don't show me enough respect, never mind, Tina. You're just as bad. Well, I'm sorry, sir. I'll keep my gob shut from now on. You just treat me like I'm your employer. And you show a bit of respect. Your superiors will get to the bottom of all this. No chance, they've got better things to do. Funny that, because there's a bloke in an army uniform heading for the door now. Yeah, yeah. You serious? Unless I've started recruiting door to door. Right, I'm not in, you haven't seen me, all right? Hang on, I'm not lying. Oh, please, Dad, they can't know I'm here, yeah? But they're like ministers of the crown or knights of the realm. Oh, I don't want Gary getting court martialed. They should have thought about that before he'd done a bunk. 
You have a lot of things that you wind us, but I never had you down as a grass. Uh, I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Windus. I'm Sergeant Major Keith Partridge. I'm looking for your son. I got it. Is what you're not into. My Uncle Peter used to spend hours under Hippo's bonnet with a Haynes manual. Hippo? Well, that's what we called his Hillman imp. Oh. Don't touch that! Oh, God, it made me jump. Sorry, the, the mechanic said not, not, not to touch that particular part. It's, uh, it, it's some sort of computer. Well, I don't know what the problem is. Just have to get a mechanic out. We've no means of contacting one. Then we'll have to walk into Howard. <laughs> don't be silly. It'll be dusk soon. Let's cuddle up by the fire with a nice competition entry. Another competition? You've done six already today. My PB is 27. <laughs> but we can bring in the changes if you like. Immerse ourselves in Woody Heights or the tenant of Wildfell Hall. I suppose this is some sort of literary pilgrimage. Besides, it it's your company I crave the most. Heathcliff! Stop it! Stop it now! So you've no idea where your son might be? No. I mean, he's never been good at staying in touch, especially since he joined you lot. This must happen all the time, though, doesn't it? These young kids, they don't have any stickability. Should we do something? Contact the police? <clears throat> I mean, where do you think he is? Recruits do go away well from time to time, yeah, but not usually such bright lads as your Gary. Right. It's early days, but his CO reckons he's got the makings of a fine soldier. Hard working. Practical, good head on his shoulders, and a very good army career in prospect. So we settled him well? Very well. Until he absconded. So maybe there is something making him unhappy? Something that you don't know about? Has he said to you that he's unhappy? No. Now he knows he's in trouble, he won't want to go face the music. Put a ball through a window once, didn't see him for a week. We know the guys have second thoughts, it's only natural. So as it stands, he's looking at a fairly light punishment, but... The longer he leaves it. When he does get in touch, try and talk some sense into him, will you? Oh, he hasn't listened to anything I've had to say since he got out of nappies. <laughs> All the same, to be a real pity to see a good career go down the swanny. Oh, well, this is an unexpected surprise. Sure, I have called first? Uh, only so I could have got out Miss Scrofts. No, oh, you look beautiful. You always look beautiful. Oh. Mm. You know that client I was telling you about? Well, she just cancelled on me. Oh. Did she say why? Went for a younger model, I guess. Anyway, I don't know. Never happened to me before. Well, her loss is my gain. It got me thinking. Maybe I'm... Maybe I'm not cut out for this anymore. Hmm. So oh, the plot thickens. In fact, it's so thick you could stand a spoon in it. Oh, what's going on, Gary? Hey? That bloke was singing your praises, saying how well you'd settled in, that you'd all the makings of a good soldier. Yeah, in front of you. Well, why would you lie? Well, it's messing with your head. I'm trying to put a positive gloss on things so I'll go back and face the music. The only one playing games here is you. All right, so you believe him over me now? Got it in one. He said you were really good. Why would he make that up? I never said that I couldn't do it. I said that it won't for me. And there's a million well-paid jobs you could do instead. I saw them were looking for astronauts in the paper today. Or do you not fancy that, eh? What do you want to be, a brain surgeon? I'm happy being a loser, like father, like son. But this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You can't pass it up. Yes, I can, Dad. And do you know why? Because it's my life, my career and my decision.
Um, yeah, um, um, ambulance, please. Uh, hang on a minute. Um, I, I think she's coming round. Uh, I, I'll ring back in a minute. What are you doing here? Saving your life. Tina, have you taken anything? What? Um, um, pills, overdose, I don't know. No. Are you sure? Yes. Well, so why are you unconscious on the living room floor? And why did you, why did you pass out in the shop today? Oi, hey, Tina, what is going on? Hey, I've been phoning you. Yeah, well, my mobile must have been turned off. I've just had to leave a client in a restaurant to come and find you. I told you, I've got a prior engagement. Those samples are more important than your love life. Not so much of an opinion. Besides, you can't send me halfway to London on a Friday afternoon. Nick, I need those samples. On a Friday night, you need to sort out your life-work balance. Huh? Didn't take you long to swoop, did it? The samples are on their way by motorcycle courier. <sighs> You'll get your greasy mitts on them by nine this evening. So your Friday night won't be boring after all. Samples of what? Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. Come on, let's get out of here. It's Eddie Windus here, Gary's dad. You know what you were saying earlier about packing your job in? Mm. You weren't serious. Well, it's a very precarious existence. Yeah, well, very lucrative. Yeah, well, that's when business is good. I have my fallow periods. I don't know, I just feel the excitement's beginning to wear off. Bella! Your fault. What? Well, I told you before, the job, well, does essentially involve putting an act on. With you, I can just be myself. Very refreshing. I could get used to it. Look, by all means, tell me to mind my own business, but... Louis, can you afford to give it up? Well, I have put something aside, but not enough to retire on. What I'd really love to do... No, no, it's, it's mad. What? No, you don't even laugh no, at me. go on, tell me. OK. What's this? Alonissos. Oh? It's a tiny Greek island, population a shade over 2,000. Looks really lovely. I have to buy a little hotel and I work half the year and then do nothing for the other half. Oh, yes. Oh, I say, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I thought you were out. Well, I was, but now I'm in. What's she doing here? What? Well, just because Mum's away, I don't mean you can treat the place like an hotel. <laughs> it's not a very, um, posh hotel. Does anybody want a cuppa? I am not sitting here with him gawping. I know, but what can we do? Um, you and David don't share a room, do you? Uh, no. Good. Bring the wine. <laughs> <laughs> Night, David! How did you get in? Great force. You broke in. Well, luckily you and Sarah being here only put a cheap front door on, so I huffed and I puffed. You've got no right to break in. Mind, I doubt you'll sell the place anyway with the state it's in. You meant to put out flowers, welcome prospective buyers with the scent of coffee, not leftover food and overflown bin. It's got nothing to do with you. Well, I say leftover food. I get the impression you've not been eating very much, have you? Will you go, please? What are you going to do? Get me out. You'd better get the strength to move. I'll call the police. When did you last eat? What? I'm working on a theory of why you keep fainting and why you look so terrible. Do you mind if I um, check your fridge? Yes. What? <clears throat> oh, surprise, surprise. Empty. Been eating a lot of takeaways. Not that it's any of your business. Cupboard. Empty. And another. Oh. Hello. 
Tennessee mushroom result. Um, where do you uh, keep your pans? What do I pan for? To warm this through. Or you can drink it from the can cold. Either way, it's going inside you. Listen to this. In Wuthering Heights, relationships are like the moors. Dark, stormy, twisted. Isn't that profound? Uh-huh. Uh, would you like some cheese on toast? Cos I'm going to have some if I can get that grill to work. Please. <sighs> it really is desolate up here, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. There's an orange glow in the sky from my bedroom window. <laughs> Must be Bradford. I bet there isn't a soul around for miles. In fact, if I'm honest, I find it rather unsettling. I can't imagine you being scared of anything. I popped outside earlier. I'm sure I saw something in the shadows. Oh, a fox or a pheasant, maybe. Or Heathcliff and Cathy out for their evening constitutional. Or a serial killer, a mad axeman. <laughs> no self-respecting mad axeman would take the trouble to come all the way out here. Unless he'd been watching us, waiting to pounce. Don't say that. You'll, you'll get me going. Honestly, Mary, you wax lyrical all day about how beautiful it is, and as soon as the sun goes down, you, you start spooking me out. Sorry. I've got a very vivid imagination. If I get scared in the night, can I come in with you? Absolutely not. We could huddle together for safety. Under no circumstances do you come into my room. I don't care if we're under siege from an army of zombies. You stay in your own room. Do you hear? Yes. Now, do you want pickle on your cheese on toast? I found a couple of fig rolls in the back of the cupboard as well. I'm not hungry. 1,500 calories a day. That's what the female body requires. Never mind what any of those mad diets or websites say. Uh, I'm not on a diet. I blame those celebrity magazines. How I lost a stone in five days. You know, people should just be happy as they are. I'll never be happy again. You will, actually. As soon as you eat the soup and the biscuits. Prince among biscuits, the fig roll. <coughs> right, I'll make you a deal. Eat the soup and I'll go. Half of it. Night, You stop gawping at me. I'm worried that if I turn my back, you'll tip it in a plant pot or something. It's quite nice, actually. I don't know, I'm a light mushroom. Mm, never made it into my top five. It's not up there with tomato or oxtail. Oxtail? Yeah. Mm. But for my money, Scotch broth knocks all tin soups into a cocked hat, especially in winter. My nan says it's like a two-bar fire in a tin. I don't want any more. If you make me eat it, I'll be sick. Yeah, well, I'm guessing you'll just be sick as soon as I walk out of that door anyway. I'm not bulimic. And I'm not on some weird diet. Good. Because people go on a diet to look good. But you, mate, you look awful. 
I haven't got any eating disorder. That's not what's wrong. Yeah, well, you've got a fainting disorder. You know, you're keeled over twice in one day. Can't stop thinking about my dad. Can't believe I'm never going to see him again. Hey, Tina, mate. And I know I should be starting to come to terms with it by now. And I know I should upset the fact that he's gone, but I can't. I can't move on. And it's just with me all day, every day, this horrible, empty feeling. And I just miss him so much. I don't want to eat because I don't want to live.